Hey everybody, I'm here in my backyard in Las Vegas and I'm going to give you a quick tour, show you what I did with some of the money that I made up in North Dakota and show you some of the improvements that I've made to my uh, yard. Probably not as exciting as a lot of um, things that other people have bought and I didn't buy any jet skis or a boat or a truck, a big diesel truck with a crazy exhaust and all that stuff. Instead I decided to go ahead and plan for uh, the upcoming collapse that we're going to be experiencing as the global economy seems to fall more and more um, into disarray. So basically what I did, I didn't make any videos showing you, showing you guys what I had to start with, but this whole mound here where I've built it up, that was all just gradually sloped down to here, so every time it rained, this all would all wash down here, so it was just a big mess. I dug all that up, put it up there. Some of this stuff, like this uh, retaining wall, I actually did before I ever went up to North Dakota. But all of the plants and everything I've done since uh, since I was up there. So I used the money, and I think I used it pretty wisely. Um, all this hard work and everything is going to provide food for my family for many years. So I'll start over here at the south side of my yard. We got a pomegranate, and this is all a work in process and progress, so it's not exactly how it's going to be, and um, I'm going to continue to document exactly what I have going. So I have two different varieties of pomegranates there. Pomegranates grow real good here in Vegas, and they grow like a weed, so I'm already starting to get some production, even though this thing's only been in the ground for maybe four months. You can see there, there's a pomegranate. And you can actually see a big squash bug on there. So I'll deal with him after the video is over. I'll be making a video showing you guys how I uh, take care of them also. So this is a different variety of pomegranate right here. You can see it blooming. This variety here is a... Uh, let's see... This variety here is a Utah sweet pomegranate. So it's a little different style. You can see where this one gets real tall. This one here is more of a short, bushy type one. Here's a goji berry my wife wanted. I went ahead and planted that just for fun. I don't know how good it's going to do. It hasn't really changed at all since we put it in. And I love citrus. So we planted a lot of uh, different kinds of limes, lemons. And that whole back wall is just... Kind of, it's gonna, all these vines will climb up there. It's gonna be honeysuckle, help attract the bees, to help pollinate the stuff. All of these are strawberries, and when we got those three or four months ago, they were little tiny, maybe five or six leaves each. Now that's just one plant, so it's huge. So here we have a, a Mexican lime tree. Next we have two more pomegranates. And this one's been really producing good. We haven't actually harvested any off of here. But they're just about getting ready to be ripe and ready to come out of there. We had a bunch of other stuff planted up in here. We had watermelons and cantaloupe and pumpkins. I've already taken that out of there and getting the soil ready for planting the fall crop. So this here is a Lisbon lemon, I believe it is. A Lisbon or a... Meyer lemon, I can't remember on this one. So this thing's taken off, it's getting huge already. So you can see how big that is. It's over six foot tall. It's only been in the ground maybe four months at the most, I guess. Here's leftover from the cantaloupe. And here's a grapefruit tree. That's an Oro Blanco grapefruit. I also planted a couple varieties of grapefruit. This will all be coming out here in the next uh, week, all these weeds and everything. Nothing's been planted here. There's tons of crabgrass everything so that I had to deal with. And I'm uh, still trying to get all that thinned out. So, uh, great. Here's a mandarin. All of these are pretty sensitive to the cold, so when it gets below, you know, 32, 34 degrees, I'll have to keep these things wrapped up with some burlap. I'm going to put Christmas lights on them to help keep them a little bit warmer so they can survive the summer, or I mean the winter. 
Here's a ruby red grapefruit. This one's been struggling the whole time ever since we got it. I think I finally figured it out that it had a deficiency in magnesium. I went ahead and gave it some Epsom salt. Gave it a three tablespoons with three gallons of water. And it's slowly starting to come back. So you can see on the leaves here, it doesn't really look like an iron deficiency. It looks more like a magnesium deficiency. So I'm hoping that takes care of it. So it's starting to come back a little, and this is the leftover watermelon. These were the late late season ones. I actually just stuck two seeds in the ground, and uh, this grew from it. The heirloom variety, these are Charleston gray watermelons, and uh, they're awesome. They grew so good. I didn't do anything to it. I didn't even put any soil there. It basically grew in the sand. So this bed right there is going to be my berry. In addition to the strawberries we have planted just casually everywhere else, this is going to be blackberries and uh, raspberries. This here is another variety of lemon. This is the Meyer lemon, I believe. It's doing really good. We've already trimmed it back. It's been you know over six foot tall, and uh, just to keep the open or the middle opened up, we've trimmed it back a little, pulled off all the suckers, so that the tree can put all its energy into getting bigger so next year we get plenty of fruit production. This whole fence here is going to be nothing but grapes all the way down. Uh, I might start more berries halfway down there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet but these things also started off as little tiny plants and have really taken off. We got a pluot tree right here. and This is a pink lady apple. Anyway, so that's my backyard. I'll be putting more and more stuff in. I'll be doing all the vegetables and everything for the fall garden. I really encourage all of you guys to spend your money wisely and uh, really prepare for what's coming. You know, it's not going to get any better. I know sometimes you look out there and, you know, you watch mainstream media and you think that the market's wonderful, the stock market's going up, you know, all this stuff they tell you, house prices are rising. You know, it's all a facade. If you look at the world economists, they all tell us that the market's only going to get worse. And um, if you look at it relative to you know precious metals, things aren't going to get any better. So I encourage you all to start growing your own food. Learn how to do it because once this thing collapses on you, if you don't have water, you don't have food, you don't know how to grow your own stuff, it's going to be ugly. So And you don't want to sit there watching your family, watching your kids starve to death because you failed to make <clears throat> proper preparations. So, um, and I know it sounds crazy at this point, but it's happened throughout society. Right now we're able to keep this thing afloat because we're the world reserve currency. If it wasn't for that, we'd be um, you know, a third world country right now. So we were once the largest creditor nation and now we're the largest debtor nation. So take a look at all these things that I've planted. This is where my money's went. And uh, you know, I'm living real conservatively. I'm making money here again in Vegas doing real estate and uh, just keeping things afloat but I'm putting all the money into things that are going to benefit me down the road so I don't have to worry about my kids and my wife and me starving to death when this thing all comes crush, you know, crumbling down. So anyways, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys are all doing good. Talk to you later.